In an SHTF scenario, which gun would you choose? On my left is the famous Kalashnikov AK-47. Reliable and very dependable. And on my right is the famous Colt SP-1223. Sleek, accurate, and some say very sexy. I'm River Bay, and welcome to my gun kingdom. If you had to take your choice and pick one, either one would turn out to be a, a really good choice. But, you know, they each have their pros and cons, and, um, you know, um, these guns right here, the Colt SP-1, um, it really um, made the playing field more fair when these came about um, against the AK-47. In fact, I was watching some footage um, here on YouTube of uh, Kalashnikov and uh, Eugene Stoner. Um, Eugene Stoner is the designer of this Colt SP-1. But anyway, they sat down to a, at a table together and they each talked about their rifle that they designed. They took them apart and it was quite an experience uh, to watch that. And then I watched some more footage where Kalashnikov and Eugene Stoner actually shot skeet together. So that was entertaining too. What we're gonna do here today, we're at the 50 yard range and we're gonna shoot um, uh, groups of uh, five and uh, see how they See how they do at 50 yards. Um, I haven't adjusted the sights on any of these rifles. Um, this one is on my channel already. Um, I've had, I got two videos of this. Uh, one shooting steel and the other one I'm shooting at, uh, I think I'm shooting at 25 yards or 50 yards. You'll just have to check it out. And then this one is on one of my SHTF um, scenario videos too. So. But anyway, you know, it really helps me out when, when you guys leave a um, comment in the comment section down below and let me know what you think about my video and, and if you have like suggestions. And, and one of you wrote in that you would like to see me um, hold the lead sled um, very still when I fire it and to see how tight the groupings is because I, you know, I used to, uh, place it on the towel a lot in my videos and when you place the lead sled on the towel it kind of moves around uh, from the recoil a little bit so today um, you know even though these rubber feet on the lead sled here kind of prevent it from moving easy like when it's on a towel um, I'm, I'm gonna go without the towel I'm gonna do what my viewer suggested and uh, that way I'll try to hold it really still and that way we can get a, a, a reading, a really good reading on what kind of groups that each one of these firearms can do. And now also, um, I wanted to bring along the gun because in the, the first video that I have, um, this gun, um, I talk about being by my bedside along with my German Shepherd. So this is my Colt LE6940 M4 lookalike. And I say it's a lookalike because it does not have select fire. Okay, so it's only two positions back here. You have safe and you have fire. All right, so, um, but all three of them have iron sights on them. And this, this gun I've done um, uh, several videos on here on my channel. I think this is probably one of the best home defense uh, firearms here. Um, I like how compact it is. This collapses down, um, but you know, I, I put a, uh, a better muzzle brake on it. Uh, it's still loud, um, but, and it sends all the blowback to the shooter, but it does help you maintain your accuracy and follow up with a second shot. That's what I like about it. Um, but anyway, this is the gun that I, that I always uh, sleep with. And, it's very dependable. It's, it's like I said in that first video, it's a great urban combat fighting gun. Um, it's pretty much near perfect. And you know, all the components, internal components are essentially the same as an AR-15. 
So Colt did, this is probably one of Colt's best firearms he ever produced. All right, so. So when we talk about these firearms, we have to know the pros and cons of these firearms and what optics work the best. And uh, now another thing is, is the last time we shot here with the uh, AK-47, we were having to aim at the bottom of the target to hit the bullseye. So it's important to know where your gun is shooting at all times. And that's what we're going to do today is we're going to know where this SP-1 shoots. And again, uh, we're going to know where the AK-47 shoots. But um, I pretty much lined it up here at the very bottom, right in the center uh, with the AK and at 50 yards. And I was hitting about right there. So now all you have to be able to do is judge your distance. All right. But um, so as we go along um, in the video and we shoot these, shoot these two guns, um, we're going to talk about the pros and cons and more in detail. But another uh, viewer wrote in and left a comment in the comment section. And um, they were very nice to, to say something to me about the red dot scope and how I talked about leaving both eyes open. Because the red dot scope doesn't have any magnification, OK? And but then another viewer wrote in and said that yeah but what about the batteries in an shtf scenario you know once these batteries go go bad and you're in that type of a situation where are you going to get batteries for it right the red dot won't turn on without them all right so also you want to think about when you mount these optics is the riser okay this is a half inch riser um, and I usually have it on this firearm, but it's interchangeable. I can go back and forth with any firearm. The only thing is, is I can't mount anything on the Colt SP-1. But anyway, let's go ahead and open up this box. And it's kind of like Christmas, you know. Um, but anyway, I, I love ordering stuff for firearms. It's fun. And, but... So yeah, I haven't opened this yet. I, I got it yesterday, just in time to make the video. All right, so what the viewer suggested that doesn't, I suppose this doesn't have any magnification. We're gonna find out here. I've never, I've never used one of these before. I've always, you know, pretty much used iron sights all my life. Um, okay, this has aluminum green and blue dot, okay? So that's going to require a battery too. That's the only thing about this thing. Um, this is a 4x32, um, and these are the prism scopes. So the viewer said that um, this doesn't need it. This doesn't have any magnification. So let's open it up and see what we got here. Okay, they send you, they send you, oh, like four, looks like four Allen wrenches for this thing. So let's take it out here and see. All right. So this is going to go on the AK-47 here. All right, that looks pretty sharp, doesn't This is by UUQ. All right, so, you know, these are pretty inexpensive. Um, I read the reviews on it. It's pretty good reviews. But uh, now this, this has an etched-in um, radical. So even if you lose your battery power and you don't have any other spare batteries in an SHTF scenario, you still have that etched-in radical. Whereas the red dot um, does not have any etched in radical, okay? It's either the red dot's on or you have no luck at all uh, using the thing, right? So this thing, uh, let's see, 
it doesn't have too much magnification but anyway unfortunately um, I tried to get a side mount for the AK um, and I would recommend um, the one that gets really good re reviews is um, Midwest Industries. Midwest Industries gets really good reviews for their side mounts for these AK-47 so I went on to an auction website and I bought it last night so um, that'll be shipped within the next couple of days so make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you know when I make that next video you'll be um, aware of that one um, ready to be seen but then that way I'll be able to have this mounted on the AK-47 that doesn't look too half bad does it so it'll go up around about right in there there that looks pretty good right cool yeah it looks good with that gun it'd look good with any gun really so yeah that's uh i'm looking forward to using that but today we're just going to use the iron sights so but you know we're only at 50 yards and you know uh, when we're talking about yards um, the sights back here i talked about in my first these are good where it's just set at letter p uh, that's your combat uh, sighting that you want to use and that's good up to 300 meters which is roughly 329 yards but i think for a combat rifle i wouldn't mess around with this i mean if you're going to be shooting further than 329 yards if you're going to be shooting further than that then i would use a, a, a sniper rifle or something um, you know with a scope that has magnification um, so uh, but if this is your only gun um, it will shoot you know uh, up to a thousand meters um, you're just gonna you just have to play around with the sights um, so now this gun right in the beginning got a bad rap and it didn't deserve it and what happened back in the day when these guns first came out um, they fouled a lot from the crappy gunpowder they were using um, and they didn't some of the soldiers didn't have cleaning kits to clean them properly so um, they didn't deserve that that bad report that they got on fouling and not firing and and then you know some of these were produced with um, um, forward assist now I was lucky to find this one without the forward assist and this is a 1968 this is the way the Air Force ordered them without the forward assist back in the day all right but they might have been able to have access to uh, cleaning kits um, a little bit easier than the army did but anyway um, these guns the, the cold sp1 are known to be very accurate uh, uh, more accurate than the ak-47 but we're going to find out today with our our own little test uh, so anyway, what do you say we get started and get shooting? Okay, so again, I thank everybody for leaving a comment uh, in the comment section down below because um, I think it was a good idea that one of the viewers suggested that I go without the towel and uh, see if this lead sled can hold it real still so we can see what a grouping of five is going to be for each gun here all right so with the ak we know we have a bullet rise of at least probably five inches um, now like i said i haven't adjusted the sights of either of these guns so um, you know and a, another thing about um, SHTF scenario is stay away from your polymer magazines um, because it's better to either have the steel ones or the aluminum ones um, because earlier this morning when I got here I dropped a polymer magazine that I had in the back of the truck so um, luckily nothing happened to it but um, you don't want to take a chance on uh, losing a magazine because you drop it. All right. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my front sight right underneath the bullseye. All right. And so I don't want to cover up the front sight. I just want to start out at the top of the black target and just lower it down until I can see the bullseye right on top of my front sight. Okay, it's in the safe mode. Make sure one is in the in battery. Now, the sled sled without the towel underneath it, it's going to help with these rubber feet gripping this platform that I'm shooting off of. And what I'll do is I'll pull the rifle into my shoulder so we can keep it still, okay? So here we go out of safe mode. Here we go. Let's fire two and then look at the spotting scope. All right, let's see where we're at here. So after the first shot, the lead sled didn't move on me. Okay, so we're shooting a little high and to the left. So let's finish that. Let's finish the three that we got in there and not adjust the elevation, okay? Now I had to move it around just a little bit to get it back. But it's not as bad if the towel was underneath it. Here we go. Okay, that's it. Back on safe. Our safety flat. There you go. So I would say the last four that we fired, that's probably a good indication where where this gun is shooting. And it looks like from the spotting scope, uh, I, I don't want to say an inch, not quite an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch grouping that we got. So um, that's how this gun uh, fires, holding it still with the lead sled like that. All right, so you know the polymer magazines, they load okay, but this is an aluminum magazine, and it loads okay too. I mean, not difficult at all. All right. Make sure we're in safe mode. Pull back just a little bit and make sure one's in chamber. Yep. All right. All right, so let's see if we can get a little bit. We're going to stay on the upper target. It's very important when you're when you're um, firing that your eyesight is right in line. Like the last time I shot the AK-47, I was sitting on a higher stool here, probably about two inches higher. And um, so it raised up my eye level. So I got a smaller or a shorter stool today. And so it puts my eye right in line with this sight 
okay both sights actually the rear and the front sight so what I'm going to do again is I'm going to pull it tight into my shoulder even though it's on a lead sled pull it tight here we go here we go now the lead sled moved a little bit on that one Keep an eye on your rubber foot that's on the edge here. Okay, I'm not going to have to make any adjustments with the elevation. Here we go. Here we go. That's it. Back into safe. And check our spotting scope here. Let's see what we have. Much better. Look at that grouping. It looks like one of them went through the same hole. One of them's touching the bullseye. And then the other four down below look at that grouping on that so that's the colt sp1223 so i would say that's probably under a half inch grouping underneath that shot that's uh, touching the bullseye all right there we go with the colt let's switch over to the zastava zpap m70 ak47 shoot the ak47 now and we'll go to the lower target um, let's load five and shoot, we'll shoot a total of uh, ten. All right, so, so here we have a polymer magazine. It loads really easy. Look how nice those go in there. But the thing is, this is not what you want for an SHTF magazine. You really want the steel ones. So, but I use this because it has to be on YouTube and, and it's a 20, 20 round mag. All right. So let's shoot the lower target now. So I know where this gun shoots, so I'm gonna put the sights I'm going to line up the sight here with the bottom of that black target. And I'm shooting at the lower one, okay? Okay, because it has a bullet rise of 5 inches at 50 yards. All right, so it's off a of safe. We'll try to pull it into our shoulder and hold it still with this sled sled. Here we go. It moved on me a little bit. Here we go. Okay, let's see where that's... Put it on safe. Okay, so I'm gonna keep the sights right there, right at the bottom of the black target. I'm not gonna adjust them. Take it off. That's one of the cons with the AK-47. This safety is hard to, it's hard to push down. Uh, probably with use, more use, it would probably be a little bit easier. All right, here we go. I got the site the same place so we can see what our grouping is. Okay, before we shoot another five, let's go ahead and cover this up because we're going to shoot the AK-47. 
Let's see if we can get Loopy with the next five. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna place the sight, the front sight, again, same place at that bottom target. Right at the bottom of that black target, okay? Because it has about a five inch rise at 50 yards. Here we go. Here we go. Now the lead sled moved a little bit to the left on me. All right, but I got back in the same spot. Here we go. Here we go. Wow, the last five that we shot here. Pretty impressive for the AK-47. Now I was placing the front sight right down here. So I had a bullet rise, and this is this is more than five inches. Okay? And I was placing the first five that I shot that I covered up here, I was placing the front sight at the same place. So but this is a pretty good grouping with this three right here. This is all within a half inch of each other. So, you know, I just had a couple strays here. But like I said, your target's going to be much better. So it doesn't really matter if you like the AK-47 instead of the AR-15. I mean, your target's going to be better. You're not going to be shooting at bullseyes. So, in an SHTF scenario. But up here, the Colt did really well. Uh, AR-15, look at that. Hit it in the same hole, I think twice maybe. So that's four right here. And then we had one about, oh, it's an inch away from the other ones. So that's a really good grouping. But I had a gunsmith tell me one time to always lay down a white towel whenever you're taking a firearm apart. And that way you can see the parts a lot better. Um, and then just be careful of uh, springs flying out and getting lost. But um, you know, the AK-47, you'd probably never have to clean it. Um, and so, uh, you know, the dependability and the reliability, um, I give the edge to the AK-47. Um, you know, you're shooting at bigger targets, number one. Uh, you're not shooting at bullseyes, so you don't really have to worry about accuracy that much with a combat rifle like the AK-47 is. Um, but I give the edge to the AR-15 as far as accuracy. That last group of five that we fired, that was like pretty perfect. So I give the edge to the uh, AR-15 for accuracy, and I give the edge to uh, reliability, durability, abuse, um, um, abuse that this gun can take. Um, I give a slight edge. Um, I mean, the AR-15 is pretty durable too, but I think they're pretty much even. So it comes down to personal preference. So whichever one that you like, but make sure you hit the subscribe button down on that notification bell because I'm going to be doing another video with the AK-47 with um, the um, prism scope that I got. So I'm just waiting for the, the mount uh, that I'm gonna put on here. And, uh, but once I get that Midwest Industries uh, mount that I can mount the uh, prism scope on, then I'll do another video. And at the time this video is being made, it, it could already be up and running. So make sure you look for it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. Uh, I appreciate anything that you see in the comment section. And, uh, you know, make sure you share it with your friends and hit the like button for me. And make sure you hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified of the next video. 
but I appreciate you watching. Thank you.